In the annals of history, few names spark as much controversy as that of Pontius Pilate. Enshrined forever in the creed of millions, his pivotal role in one of the most momentous events of antiquity remains a subject of intense scrutiny and debate. Today, we delve into the complex saga of a Roman governor caught in the throes of imperial politics and a burgeoning religious movement that would change the world. Our journey begins with Pilate's origins in the echelons of Roman elite. Ascending to the governorship of Judea, Pilate found himself navigating a volatile amalgam of power, tradition, and uprising. The political and social currents of the time were a crucible for leaders, testing their mettle and moral compass. As the dawn broke over Jerusalem, a figure named Jesus of Nazareth stood before Pilate, accused by his own people yet calm in the face of mortal peril. What is truth? questioned Pilate, a query that echoed through the halls of power, as recorded in John 18 verse 38. Amid the clamor of the crowd and the stern gaze of religious leaders, Pilate faced a profound moral dilemma. His decision would echo through the ages. Choosing to wash his hands in public, declaring his innocence in the bloodshed to come, Pilate ordered the crucifixion. This act, a confluence of justice sacrificed for political expediency, marked a turning point not only for Pilate, but for the entire ancient world. The repercussions of this decision painted the rest of his life with strokes of tragedy and despair. History tells us that Pilate's rule did not long survive the aftermath of his infamous judgment. Recalled to Rome and stripped of his authority, Pilate's end was shrouded in mystery and misfortune. Some accounts suggest a grim fate, a forced exile or even a desolate suicide, as whispers of his deeds lingered like shadows in the corridors of power. Pilate's legacy, however, endures in more than just historical texts or biblical passages. He has been immortalized in art, literature, and film, portrayed variously as a villain, a pawn of destiny, or a tragic figure ensnared by his own decisions. As we reflect on his story, we see a mirror of our own struggles with duty, power, and morality. What lessons can we draw from Pilate's story that resonate in our times? This is the enigma of Pontius Pilate, a man forever marked by his role in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. As we explore his bitter end, we uncover not just a tale of antiquity, but a timeless reflection on the human condition. Pontius Pilate's rise to power was no mere twist of fate, but a testament to the intricate machinations of the Roman political landscape. Born into the ranks of the Roman elite, Pilate was thrust into a world where authority was both a privilege and a perilous burden. His ascent to the governorship of Judea was marked not only by his lineage, but also by the strategic need of Rome to maintain its iron grip over its provinces. As governor, Pilate found himself at the helm of a region seething with unrest and resistance. Judea was not just any province, it was a land brimming with religious fervor and deep-seated resentment towards Roman rule. The scriptures underscore the volatility of this period, noting in Luke 13 verse 1, Pilate had mingled Galilean blood with their sacrifices. This stark verse highlights the brutal measures Pilate often resorted to in order to quell dissent, showcasing his harsh governance style. Pilate's administration was characterized by a delicate balancing act, navigating between Roman imperial expectations and the complex local dynamics of Judean society. His role demanded not only political acumen, but a deep engagement with the local customs and religious practices. As such, his interactions with the Jewish leaders were fraught with tension and mutual distrust, a relationship marked by constant negotiation and strategic maneuvering. The political landscape of Judea during Pilate's governorship was a powder keg, primed to explode with the slightest misstep. The Gospels of Matthew and John detail instances where Pilate faced significant Jewish opposition, particularly when he attempted to bring Roman standards and effigies into Jerusalem, a move seen as an abomination by the Jewish populace. His decision to use temple taxes to build an aqueduct in Jerusalem, as mentioned in historical texts, further inflamed tensions, illustrating his often disregard for local religious sentiments. Pilate's rule was a series of such provocations and accommodations. 
Each decision he made was a stitch in the fabric of a governance that was as oppressive as it was strategically tentative. His legacy, as etched into history, was one of a ruler whose authority was marked not by the peace it maintained, but by the unrest it provoked and the pivotal role he would play in a trial that would redefine history. The scene was thus set for the fateful encounter with Jesus of Nazareth, an event that would not only challenge Pilate's authority, but also mark the beginning of the end of his rule in Judea. As we leave Pilate at this juncture, history waits in bated breath for his next move, a decision that would echo through eternity. Amidst the volatile backdrop of Judean unrest, the figure of Jesus of Nazareth emerged as a profound catalyst. As Pilate faced the day that would define his legacy, the air was thick with tension and anticipation. It was during the tumultuous times of the Passover, a period when Jerusalem was teeming with pilgrims and the city's mood was a blend of celebration and rebellion. Jesus, after being arrested and subjected to several trials under Jewish authorities, was brought before Pilate. The Gospel of John captures the gravity of this moment, stating in John 18 verses 29 to 30, Pilate then went out to them and said, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. This exchange highlights the delicate and charged nature of the interaction, as the Jewish leaders sought to implicate Jesus within the Roman legal framework. Pilate's initial reluctance to convict Jesus is evident in his repeated attempts to absolve himself of this responsibility. The Gospel of Luke notes Pilate's uncertainty, I find no basis for a charge against this man, Luke 23 verse 4. However, the chief priests and the crowd persisted, accusing Jesus of inciting rebellion against Roman authority, claiming, he stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here, Luke 23 verse 5. The pressure mounted as the crowd grew more fervent. Pilate, aware of the political ramifications, attempted to pass the responsibility to Herod, who was ruler of Galilee. However, Herod, too, found no cause for death and returned Jesus to Pilate, as described in Luke 23 verses 11 to 12. This passing between rulers not only underlines the complex political dynamics, but also emphasizes the lack of clear fault in Jesus. Faced with escalating demands and a potential uprising, Pilate made a pivotal decision that would be forever scrutinized. He offered the crowd a choice between releasing Jesus or Barabbas, a known insurrectionist. The crowd's choice of Barabbas, driven by the chief priests, is documented in Mark 15 verse 11, but the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. Reluctantly, Pilate consented to the crowd's cries for crucifixion, washing his hands in front of the multitude, symbolically disclaiming responsibility for Jesus' fate. This act, noted in Matthew 27 verse 24, when Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. Thus, the stage was set, and Jesus was led away to be crucified. Pilate's role in this pivotal episode was marked by political calculations and an evident struggle between justice and expediency. As Jesus walked the path to Golgotha, Pilate remained behind, a figure overshadowed by the monumental decision he had rendered under the weight of imperial and local pressures. As the sun climbed higher in the sky over Jerusalem, the atmosphere around the Praetorium was electric with tension. Pilate, once poised with the authority of Rome, now found himself entangled in a web of political maneuvering and public unrest. The decision to crucify Jesus was not merely a verdict passed in haste, it was the culmination of complex interactions woven with personal ambition and the harsh realities of Roman governance. The chief priests and the Sanhedrin had presented Jesus as a rebel against Rome, a claim that Pilate initially dismissed. However, their relentless accusations and the uproar among the people were catalysts that could not be ignored. They argued vehemently, if you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. 
Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar, as recorded in John 19 verse 12. This assertion struck at the heart of Pilate's political fears, playing into the overarching narrative of loyalty to the emperor. Caught in this dilemma, Pilate sought one more time to absolve himself of this decision. He presented Jesus, scourged and humiliated, to the crowd, proclaiming, Behold the man! John 19 verse 5 His hope was to evoke pity and persuade the crowd to accept a lesser punishment. Yet, the sight of Jesus, crowned with thorns and cloaked in a purple robe, only incited the crowd further. They cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Their voice is not just a chant, but a clamor that sealed the fate of the Nazarene. Pilate's decision was finally shaped by the confluence of fear, frustration, and a strategic retreat in the face of potential chaos. In a decisive move, he washed his hands before the crowd, a symbolic gesture to show his disengagement from the moral weight of his action, stating, I am innocent of this man's blood, see to it yourselves, Matthew 27 verse 24. Yet, this act could not erase the implications of his choice. With the issuance of the crucifixion order, Jesus was handed over to Roman soldiers. They led him away, burdened under the weight of the cross, through the streets of Jerusalem towards Golgotha. This act, mandated by Pilate, was not just an execution, it was a political statement, a display meant to underscore Roman authority and dissuade any thoughts of insurrection. Thus, the stage was set, and the die was cast. Pilate, from his seat of power, watched as Jesus was taken away, his fate a stark testament to the tangled dance between imperial law and personal conviction. The decision to crucify Jesus marked a pivotal moment in history, orchestrated under the shadow of Pilate's authority and the imperatives of empire. In the wake of the crucifixion, the streets of Jerusalem slowly returned to their usual pace, but the echoes of the event resonated far beyond the city walls. For Pontius Pilate, the decision to crucify Jesus, though initially seen as a solution to quell unrest, soon began to unravel the very fabric of his authority. Historical accounts suggest that Pilate's governance faced increasing scrutiny from both his Roman superiors and the local populace. His administration, already marked by earlier missteps and brutal repressions, now bore the stain of having executed a figure who rapidly became revered as a martyr by his followers. The consequences of his decision were swift and unforgiving. Not long after the crucifixion, Pilate's rule in Judea was challenged by a new wave of accusations. The Jewish authorities, perhaps seeking to exploit Pilate's weakened political standing, brought charges against him to the Roman Emperor Tiberius. Such charges likely painted Pilate as a provocateur of unnecessary violence and an instigator of public disorder, reflecting poorly on the stability of Roman rule under his command. Pilate's recall to Rome was a humiliating end to his tenure as governor. Removed from power, he faced the imperial court, a daunting prospect even for a man of his standing. Ancient sources, including those outside the Bible, hint at a grim fate awaiting him in Rome. Some traditions suggest that Pilate suffered under the weight of his actions, leading to his eventual exile or even suicide, though these accounts vary in detail. The tale of Pilate thus closes not with triumph, but with a stark downfall. Stripped of his authority and haunted by the shadows of his past decisions, Pilate's legacy is forever intertwined with the tragic figure of Jesus. His story serves as a somber reminder of the potent mix of political ambition and moral consequence. As the sun set on his career, Pilate faded from power, a figure overshadowed by the dramatic and pivotal events he once commanded. As the echoes of Pontius Pilate's governance faded into the annals of history, his image endured not merely as a historical figure, but as a symbol etched into the collective memory of cultures across the ages. Pilate's legacy, complex and multifaceted, has been scrutinized and interpreted through various lenses, painting him alternately as a villain, a reluctant actor, or a tragic figure ensnared by circumstances beyond his control. In the Christian narrative, Pilate is forever remembered for his role in the trial and crucifixion of Jesus. 
This critical moment is immortalized in the Nicene Creed, recited by millions, stating, crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. This line serves not only as a historical anchor but also as a theological assertion that underscores the intersection of divine prophecy and human agency. The biblical portrayal provides a multifaceted view of Pilate. In John 19 verse 12, his political dilemma is palpable as he grapples with the decision to crucify Jesus, caught between the ire of the crowd and his own wife's foreboding about the man who has done nothing deserving death, Luke 23 verse 15. These moments highlight the inner conflict faced by Pilate, portraying him as a man divided between his duties and his conscience. Pilate's representation extends beyond the scriptures into the broader realms of art, literature, and film. Artists through the centuries have depicted him in various lights, from medieval paintings that show him as a stern ruler to modern films that explore his psychological turmoil. Literature, too, has probed the depths of his character, often focusing on his pivotal question, what is truth? A philosophical inquiry that resonates through the ages. In cultural memory, Pilate's legacy is a tapestry woven with themes of power, justice, and morality. His story invites ongoing debate about the nature of responsibility and the complexities of power. As each generation revisits Pilate's actions, they find new meanings and insights, reflecting their own societal and moral questions. Thus, the figure of Pontius Pilate stands as a monumental example of how history and myth, truth and interpretation can converge, creating a legacy that transcends the man himself. His story, embedded in the cultural consciousness, continues to provoke thought and dialogue, a testament to his enduring impact on human history. As we conclude our journey through the complex and multifaceted life of Pontius Pilate, we have traversed the landscapes of history, theology, and cultural interpretation. From his role in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ to the enduring debates about his moral and political dilemmas, Pilate's story offers us a profound glimpse into the intertwining of destiny and decision, authority, and its consequences. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of one of history's most intriguing figures. If you found this journey enlightening, please like and comment below to share your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe for more insightful content like this. And, as always, God bless you for watching and reflecting with us today.